This video is about the algebra of functions. And to begin, we'll just define our function arithmetic, which is the same arithmetic you're used to, except now we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions instead of just numbers. So it turns out that when you see notation as follows, um, we can understand these arithmetic operations. So when you see open parenthesis f plus g close parenthesis and then open parenthesis x close parenthesis, one way to say that would be f plus g of x. And that you know this is all still using the function notation we're used to. So that the same thing. It turns out that's the same thing as f of x plus g of x. So it's a fairly intuitive notation. It's kind of like, it's almost like you're distributing this x uh, into both functions, though that's not quite what's happening. That's what the notation at least looks like. Uh, it turns out it works not only that way for addition, but also subtraction. So f minus g of x is equal to f of x minus g of x. And then f times g of x would be equal to f of x times g of x. And fourthly, f over g of x, so that's f divided by g of x, equals f of x over, or f of x divided by g of x, with one extra provision, which is we can't let that denominator function be equal to zero, because as we know, we can't divide by zero. So we just have to take one extra consideration in looking out for that uh, when it comes to domain and things. Speaking of domain, Let's also understand that the domain of any of these combinations of functions is the intersection, which also means overlap, of the domains of f and g individually. We'll take a look at some examples of this, but overlap or intersection would be indicating where they're both true, where domains are both existing. Let's try an example where we want to find f of, sorry, f plus g of x, and we're given these two functions. f of x is given as 4x squared minus x minus 3, and g of x is given as x plus 1. So we'll do this in phases, um, the first being really just the notation. If we wanted to find f plus g of x, let's recall, we know that really means f of x plus g of x. We're just adding these two functions together, basically. And since we were given both functions directly here above, we'll just copy them into place. So f of x is simply 4x squared minus x minus 3. That takes care of the f function. But then we're saying plus g of x. Now, g of x uh, so we'll say plus after copying the f function, then copy the g function, so plus and then x plus 1. So we have here the f of x function plus the g of x function, just as you see them simply being added together. Now, we'll simplify this result and do so just with familiar algebra of combining like terms. You'll notice if we did that, we'd have 4x squared. And then notice we have a minus x and a plus x. Those would actually just cancel out. And then we have minus 3 and plus 1, which altogether would be minus 2. And so 4x squared minus 2 would be the combination function. This is f plus g of x, which is mainly what we were asked for. Now, let's also discuss the domain of this function, although it may not have been explicitly uh, requested in this problem. It'd be good to review it along with our definitions that we wrote above. So our domain involves, as we stated above, the intersection of the domains of f and g that we're working with here. So let's first of all identify what those individual domains would be. So the domain of f, I'll just illustrate or denote this as D, capital D subscript f, domain of f. Uh, for this, you just simply look at the f equation we were given. That's the 4x squared minus x minus 3. That's a polynomial function, and as you may recall, the domain of any polynomial function is always all real numbers. And so we can say our domain of f is simply negative infinity to positive infinity. That's using uh, interval notation. Uh, we can also, though, state the domain of g function, so d subscript g, which being a polynomial as well, this one has x plus 1, 
would also be a domain of all real numbers, so as well negative infinity to positive infinity. And those are the individual domains of our functions. Now, as we stated above in our definition, the domain of the addition or the sum of these, so we could say domain of f plus g, would be the overlap or the intersection of these two domains. Well, if you find out where all real numbers intersects with all real numbers, or you could say overlaps with, um, it would be everywhere, all real numbers. So we could say our addition function domain d of f plus g would have a domain of all real numbers as well, negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, that is the overlap or intersection of the two domains we were given. Let's try another example of uh, the same type where we want this time to consider two functions given. One is f of x equals 1 over x and the second is g of x equals 2 over x minus 6. Uh, x minus 6 all being in that denominator. So we want to find two things. First of all we want to find f plus g of x and as we know that's really just f of x plus g of x, using our notation defined above. And so we'll just copy these two functions in place. Instead of f, we'll put 1 over x, and instead of g, we'll put 2 over x minus 6. And really, you know, you could do a little algebra to combine those with a common denominator, uh, but for now we'll just say that's our combination function. We're just adding those up. Now let's talk a little bit more about the domain of uh, both the individuals and the, combina the combination of these two functions here. So, as we did before, let's kind of just pick them apart. The domain of f, uh, as given above, as 1 over x, would be anything except what would cause that to be dividing by 0. Well, if you have 1 over x, you can't let x be 0. So we would say all reals except 0, which in interval notation would be negative infinity comma 0, close parentheses, and then we use this union symbol, which is like a big, it looks kind of like a big capital U. And then after that, we have everything to the right of zero. So we'd say zero comma infinity. So that's the domain of F. We would then also want to consider the domain of G. Now the G function was given as two over X minus six, which means we can't let X be six, otherwise we'd be dividing by zero. So we'd say negative infinity comma six union, and then 6, comma, infinity, with all parentheses as the boundary symbols for all these intervals, uh, since we're using either infinity or a boundary value like 0 or 6 that we're trying to avoid so that we don't divide by 0. So those are the two uh, separate domains for f and g, but the domain of this new combination function, so the domain of the function f plus g of x, will be the overlap or intersection of these two domains. So you can imagine that, or not imagine, you can notice that the first domain of f is everything except 0, which means we can't use 0 in the overlap either. The domain of g is everything except 6, so we can't use 6 in the overlap, which means in summary we can't use 0 or 6 in the overlap intersection of these two domain, uh, domains for our final domain. So we'll say, using interval notation, negative infinity, comma, zero is the first boundary uh, we'd hit. We have to skip over it, so we close the parentheses at zero, union to hop over that, and then go zero, comma, six in parentheses. Close that up, but then we hop over six, so union again, and then six, comma, infinity, which will take us on to everything else. So this will be our total domain of the combination function. In this case, it's a sum of functions. Let's try another example. This time we're going to say let f of x equal x squared plus 4x, and then g of x equals 2 minus x. We want to find two things. First, we want to find f minus g of 6, and then secondly, we want to find f over g of x and its domain. So in this first uh, example, the first problem here, we want to find f minus g of 6. Well, in order to do that, we could understand that uh, given the notation we defined above as f of 6 minus g of 6. 
which means you're plugging in 6 to each function individually and then just subtracting them. So you could almost do that as like a sideshow, just compute those numbers. Let's do that over here. We'll say f of 6, that's plugging in 6 to the f function, that would be 6 squared plus 4 times 6, uh, of course that's 36 plus 24, which happens to be 60. Now that's f of 6, so we could go back and just replace f of 6 with 60. Then we'll go on to g of 6, if we crunch that number out as well on the side here. Um, that would be plugging in 6 to the g function, that would be 2 minus 6, of course that's negative 4. And so then we would plug that in. So we really have 60 minus negative 4, uh, which of course is really 60 plus 4, which is 64. So we could say our answer for this first question of uh, f minus g of 6 would be 64. Let's go on to our second part, which said to find f over g of x and its domain. Now recall from our uh, notation to find above, f over g of x really means f of x over g of x, which means we're just putting these two functions one on top of the other. The f function, of course, was the x squared plus 4x. We'll put that in the numerator. Down below, we'll put 2 minus x in the denominator. That's the g function. We'll go ahead now and try to find the domain of our combination function, which means we want here the domain of f over g. That's what we just found. Of course, we found it to be the uh, rational or fractional expression where the numerator was x squared plus 4x and the denominator was 2 minus x. Now, to find the domain of this function, of course, with any combination, as we stated above, the domain is the, inter, uh, sorry, the, the intersection, which is the overlap uh, where they both occur. Uh, but there's an extra exception in the case where you have the fraction or quotient, the f over g, and that is we have to look at where that might cause division by zero. Of course, if we look at this denominator being 2 minus x, that means we can't let x be 2, otherwise we'd be dividing by zero. So our domain is simply going to be everything except 2, uh, which we'll write as negative infinity comma 2 parentheses, close them, union, and then parentheses with 2 comma infinity, meaning everything except 2. And the reason we had to be careful with this division uh, is because if you simply take the overlap of f and g as given, they actually are defined all real numbers and all real numbers. So the overlap would be all real numbers, kind of like we saw previously. But this is a different case because we're using the division, so we had to exclude this extra value, which would cause division by zero.